What I love about Anchor is that it's given me creative control of my own material. I was approached by a big company to do a podcast about the art world and I didn't want to sign over all rights to them. Uh, Anchor has allowed me to make this podcast and to keep creative control as well as financial control in terms of advertising. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free. You can use it on your phone or your computer. There are tools that help you to upload your recordings uh, that you've done separately or on the app. They'll distribute it for you as well, which again, you know, I couldn't wrap my mind around distribution and they have it all there for you in one place, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and many more. Uh, you can easily make money from it as well. Uh, they help you advertise, as you can see right now, I'm getting my first ad out through Anchor. And all you have to do is download the app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck with your podcast and getting your voice out there and owning your content. Welcome back to another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast. Today we'll be speaking with Johann Heiling von Lanzenauer. And Johann is a bit of a Renaissance man, or he's grown into one uh, over the years that I've known him. Uh, he's an incredible person personally. Uh, in terms of his work, he has uh, so many wonderful projects going on, starting from his gallery uh, in Berlin and Hamburg. And uh, you'll hear the rest as he speaks for himself. Thanks for joining us and stay well. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Johan. Nicolette, hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, so it is Apero Hour over there in France. Oh, yeah, it's more like a siesta. <laughs> siesta, right. So tell me, where are you in France, in, in the Alsatian region? Um, I am close to the German border. Alsace mm -hmm. is on the on the border of Germany. Um, mm -hmm. There's the Rhine Valley where the uh, Rhine uh, uh, River is is going through. It's between the Black Forest and the Vosges, which is mm -hmm. like two amazing mountain areas. Mm -hmm. We're just in the middle. It's like very close to the city of Baden-Baden, where I was born. Ah, uh, yes, beautiful. I I actually know quite a few. Uh, people born in the region of Baden-Baden and uh, I haven't really oh, yeah. spent a lot of time there but I think I should go visit again. You should definitely come see us. It's beautiful yeah, so just in summertime is amazing. Yeah well exactly but I, I hopefully will come after this whole lockdown is over and we start to move a bit more freely under what circumstances we're not sure. So you have an artist residency in that region right? La Maison de Temps? Yes exactly. So tell us La about Maison the residency. Temps residency is um is actually it's a, a dream come true after having been an art dealer and creative consultant and advisor for 20 years mm -hmm. um i've always been dreaming of of uh, living in the countryside after i've been living in, in several cities all over the world between los angeles and new york where we met actually and berlin and mm -hmm. london and all those cities i realized that mm -hmm. i want to go home to my home turf i i come from this area close to i was born in baden baden so i was looking mm -hmm. for a countryside location and found this amazing old farmhouse in a tiny village on the french side on the french border and mm -hmm. um moved in, uh, created a house where I'm living and also there's a, there's a huge barn and several apartments I designed and created mm -hmm. where artists come and uh, stay with us like once or twice a year for a few weeks and create uh, artwork which is in connection, happening in connection or inspired by, by nature. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah, it, it is actually, it's... Uh, for me, it's pure happiness and luck to to be able to live that way, to have that lifestyle. If, after being living in all those cities and urban environments, mm -hmm. I realized that I found my true happiness in the countryside. And what? How long has that been going on? When did the, uh, you start with the residency there? The residency started in 2018 with uh, a mm -hmm. Berlin artist, abstract painter who 
basically came from street art. He's, he's kind of this, this Berlin street art icon from the early thousands and moved on into more like into a kind of fine art context. So he's doing amazing, like brutal sculptures and abstract paintings. Mm -hmm. And that's what he has been showing here. There's this beautiful video online also. Okay. And um, yes, last year we have been just like, uh, we had no artist on spot. We just had, had mm -hmm. like a show with uh, works from uh, Random International and Julian Schnabel and a beautiful set of artists. And the situation is like we invite people from all over Europe to come experience the exhibitions and to spend mm -hmm. time with us. Wow. So you have a gallery space there as well, like somewhere you exhibit the work that the artists do during their residency. Yes, I, I, re I rebuilt this, this huge barn into a, a gallery space. So it is mm -hmm. a summer location. There's no heating in there, so it's pretty raw. Mm -hmm. And you still mm -hmm. can feel the, the hundreds of years of, of farming in that, in that space. I wanted to keep that spirit. But uh, we raised like enormous white walls. Um, in the middle of this pretty raw space. I mean, you have the confidence mm -hmm. somehow right now. And, yes. Uh, that's where we're showing the work. So I want to, to keep the spirits up. I didn't want to make like slick white space, but I want mm -hmm. to keep the history alive and to give the, the visitor an experience which is unique, like to uh, experience really well-developed art in a, in, in a natural context. Environment. So yeah. besides the people coming from outside of the area, do people in the neighborhood, in the region where you are, come and visit as well from time to time to see what's going on? Yeah, we do. We have some very interested uh, uh, people in the area. There's also great museums in uh, in Baden-Baden mm -hmm. and in the area of uh, Mannheim, Karlsruhe. Very good mm -hmm. museums and curators coming. Mm -hmm. Artists like uh, the Black Forest superstar Stefan Strumbel is living in the area. Mm -hmm. he, he joins in with, with his crowd. And yeah, different different people coming in, also very, being very thankful, maybe a little, even a little bit more thankful than in the big cities where you have this whole roster of hundreds of galleries and, 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 and <laughs> studios you can visit. You know, here it's a little yes. more rare, makes it more more exceptional. The, yes. the dialogue about artists is, is much different in, in that sense. Yes, I can imagine. Um, and in a way, a little bit slower and more authentic, not so uh, market driven to cover the rent, but uh, just fun stuff that you want to do and want to make. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting aspect. I, I discovered also from myself, for me personally. It's like the, the encounter is the people living in the in this tiny village and the farmers and those people who are living that beautiful simple life is, is very it's very humbling and it's very um authentic as you said and mm -hmm. it's a it's it, it's meeting real people you know you and me you know we've been like strolling the art world yeah. for, for decades now almost yes, and, yes. you know all, all that she she foo foo uh you know whatever <laughs> ta -la -la thing going yeah. on i mean it's it gets it gets boring after a while and people right. don't really yeah. show their faces actually they're all playing their role in that that crazy theater um, right yeah. i've been part of this i don't deny having been part of that show and it's okay and it's 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 a human phenomena and but perhaps the, we need the masks there yeah, yeah of course you need to protect mm -hmm. yourself because everything mm -hmm. is kind of fake yeah mm -hmm. and here people sense this in a second and if you if you show up in that style i mean they're like hey come on man show your true self you know right and right, they're very right. direct and saying come on what's that what, what 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 are you trying to tell me you know and that's very <laughs> <laughs> and that's very a very mm -hmm. nice experience it's what i i enjoy a lot also also the whole in, you know, when you when you live in a city like I did for so many years, it's it's so nice to be mm -hmm. in touch with uh, with the plants and with the yes. with the um, with the tides. You know, I totally mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. contact with the development of blooming and dying and the ephemeral side of nature and the winds Amazing. in the in the trees and 
Yes. All those things yeah. which are supernatural and, and so, so simple and, and, and they're just there and we belong yes. to it a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we come from there and I totally lost contact with all that stuff. So I, I, I'm enjoying this a lot. This is also what we called La Maison des Temps, uh, which means the place is called La Maison des Temps, which means it's the, the place, the, the house of the Time. of the times, if you want. Yes. And the times yes, yes. could be in French, could be like the rhythm, it could be mm -hmm. the tides, it could be time, it could be the times. So that's that's a yes. it's a very philosophical and open name we gave the place because it's it's all about that, you know, like being in touch with with the real things. Yes. And the double entendre. Well, I'm now that we've started talking about nature, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the members club you started, the Arts and Nature Social Club, which I really love the premise of the club, bringing people from various backgrounds like business, science and art to come up with ideas how to bring humanity back into alignment with nature through interaction with nature, like you just described. So tell us what you've done, how you started it and how you see the future of it. Thank you, Nicolette. Yeah, that's that's my other hard project, but actually everything links together. So the Arts and Nature mm -hmm. Social Club is like something you could imagine to to des describe it in two seconds would be, I would say it's something in between the Rotarian group, Rotarian club mm -hmm. and Soul House, something in between, but with a, mm -hmm. with, a, with, a, with a specific mission. So it is a members club where we have to apply to and it's like a business networking club as well. So it's happening in mm -hmm. beautiful hotels and locations all over the world. Our main chapter mm -hmm. is happening in Berlin. We have already more than 100 members. It's, we just started last year and mm -hmm. are about to, to, to create chapters in Los Angeles, London, Hamburg, Frankfurt, Munich, mm -hmm. and my area of Baden-Baden. So the plan mm -hmm. is definitely to, to create like a, a global group of people, of professionals coming out of the backgrounds of science, art, and uh, entrepreneurship. And the core mission of the Arts and Nature Social Club is to, to ask the question of our time, actually, is to ask how can we as a species, human beings, how can we be in harmony with natural things, with nature, uh, with the global bio? Yes. How can we be cool with the global bio and geo system again? I mean, mm -hmm. we're in a pretty mm -hmm. critical situation right now. And I believe strongly that... Um, we only can solve that, that, that issue if we uh, bring people together, if we create groups, if we are social, if we discuss issues, if we mainly mm -hmm. if we change our spirits and consciousness about our relationship to nature. So I thought it would be interesting to bring Nobel, sci uh, Nobel uh, Prize winners together with amazing artists and uh, mm -hmm. blue chip company CEOs. And that's what we're doing actually in Berlin. Um, there's beautiful, wow. uh, um, yeah. There's beautiful videos online. You can watch how how the, the our our salon evenings are happening. How people are gathering. How we bring art, science, and, and entrepreneurship together, and how we discuss solutions. It, one thing is to discuss solutions. The other thing is to to create new networks. Implement them. And to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, like to implement different different worldviews. You know. So many of us are, mm -hmm. are, are nerding around in their specific pro professional skill or, or social surrounding. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more mm -hmm. to discover. I mean, uh, a conceptual artist meeting a, a top scientist and sharing visions, it's something which creates new endeavors and new visions and new worldviews. And that's what I'm trying to cultivate. And um, mainly... What we try to cultivate as well is, is empathy for nature, like for all human mm -hmm. beings, but all other living beings. Yeah. Well, I think it's amazing because, you know, as you described it too, I just thought about Burning Man. I mean, they don't specifically mm -hmm. say what you described, but um, it's, it's, the ideas are pretty much the same. And the, what happens when you're out there on the playa is exactly what you described, this mixing of people from different fields and cultures. And anyway, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm so glad that everyone uh, in their own circle is figuring out these things and, and influencing others internationally. Yeah, um, it's beautiful to see how people are engaged themselves. It's, all, it's, all, it's a non-for-profit. 
and mm -hmm. people are just um, organizing themselves and giving their time and their skills and their networks and the energy mm -hmm. to create those those salons and our activities we're doing so yeah please go on our website arts and nature social dot club there you can learn more about our yes. activities good good and now uh, we're going to go backwards um, i wanted to speak about the gallery first but i guess it makes sense going backwards because it's in a way it was the foundation and your past how yeah. did you start in the art business and the build up like you said you i know you changed course at some point with the programming in the gallery and Tell mm. us about the expansion to Hamburg and stuff like that. Okay, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, we, we uh, I found it um, as a young man. I, I created a Berlin showroom for alternative arts and was a totally non-for-profit organization. And we had several artists coming in from all over the world where my friends, some of them are really famous artists right now, specifically from the street art field. So... We had, um, I had a station first show in Europe for, for the artist JR, for the street art photographer. Um, we had a first exhibition in Germany with Shepard Ferry, Obey, and Andre Sarayva was showing with us. So you, you see, it was mm -hmm. like pretty much to focus on street art. And we were mm -hmm. kind of the first and only uh, um, um, street art gallery in Europe. Then soon came Steve Lazaridis with Banksy and, and a mm -hmm. whole other group of, of galleries. And mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah, it was a true passion project, which at some point developed into something which uh, went commercial. So people asked to buy the artworks and I don't even really realized you can sell art, you know, it was not all about it, you know, it was not at all about selling art, it was all more about bringing in interesting and relevant projects, you know. And right. at that moment, uh, when I realized people want to buy the art, I, I realized I can create my profession out of it. And uh, we set up a business and created an art gallery in Berlin. And mm -hmm. from there, soon we went to... Um, to Hamburg, opened a second space because my business partner lives in Hamburg and we, we created a beautiful um, base of collectors in Hamburg. Then we started classically mm -hmm. going international, doing art fairs and stuff. But we had always this uh, stigma of being a street art gallery in the global art business. Um, this was always a, yes. a stigma because the the art world regarding the established fairs is, is is very and it's very narrow-minded in, in a certain way so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they're more focused mm -hmm. on academic art mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. even after five or ten years when we didn't show street art at all anymore and we were really like showing very established positions like Julian Schnabel, Hermann Nietzsche, uh, you tell them big artists we're showing now we still had that image of being a street art gallery and have been denied by by art fairs, you know, because people uh -huh. love it to to think in cliches. Yes, <laughs> it's easy. It's easy, but it's dangerous. You know, it's the base of yeah. They, the, they don't push themselves. Yeah, it's the base of all bad things in the world. You know, I mean, <laughs> everything thinking <laughs> cliche is not healthy because it's putting yes, people yes. in a box. It's uh, prejudice and all that stuff. And every human yes. being carries a little bit of this in his in himself, you know, but it's it's dangerous, mm -hmm. not good. Well, I don't want to put those mm -hmm. people in the same box. Okay, don't take me wrong. Um, Absolutely. But because uh, that again would be <laughs> would be a cliche. <laughs> 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 well, I must say, you know, it's refreshing to speak to you. Uh, I, I haven't seen you for a while. I think the last time I saw you was in the Hamptons, like in Montauk or something. Oh, like my that. goodness. Two summers like... ago. Oh, that's and I, you were having such a good time. Yeah, it was amazing. But that's like six years ago, I think. Is it six years? Yeah, wow. that's quite a while. I love Montauk. It's Time amazing. Is really flying. Oh man, that's a beautiful area of the world. <laughs> it's so crisp out yes, there. Yes, well, we might be hanging out there this summer. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah. Yes. And now tell me, how does it work with your family? Because I know you have a daughter. You didn't have any other kids besides her, or did you have some more? I have, um, yes, I have my, my daughter. My daughter is 20. She's studying um, English oh and God. cultural sciences at the Humboldt University in Berlin. 
And she, yeah, she, she, oh my god, wait, stop, stop, stop. I just realized your daughter is now 20. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus she's <Christ>. amazing. <laughs> she's a she's a tall, wow, beautiful, wow. very sweet and smart woman. girl. Yeah, woman. Yeah, amazing. You know, I, it's true. The last time I was looking at pictures, she was not yet 20. Oh my goodness, oh, yeah. wow, okay. I know. No, she's amazing. amazing. She's very cute. She has a she has a very cool boyfriend. She's from mm-hmm. he's from Los Angeles. He's like mm-hmm. a, a designer mm-hmm. for um for for um video game figures. Like he's creating those beautiful, very progressive monsters that w- w- will be animated later. Like <laughs> very interesting. What wow. He's and she, and do they come out and visit you there? In the uh, not yet, not yet. I mean, we had uh, last year she couldn't because of the university. This year she wanted to come, but uh, there was Corona. But uh, she she has oh, yeah. been asking to come. I'm sure she's coming very soon. We're still confined in France here. Yeah. We well, you know go. that's the... yeah. that's true. That's true. I forgot about this whole confinement thing. And like you said, you know, when you're young, you want to be with your friends in the city, running around to all those things. And then as you get a little older, you start to appreciate that. Your dad has this place in the countryside, <laughs> yeah. and then you perhaps come visit more. Yeah, probably. I mean, at twenty-one, it's like yeah, yeah, you're more focused on, on the city. But she, she's not like a Burkhain nightclub person at all. Or something mm-hmm. you could imagine, because she loves to dress up, and she, yeah. she's a. Uh, but that that generation, I have the impression they're not interested in that stuff anymore. Like nightclubs i i know i know it's it's it's, it's, yeah it's not their thing it's funny but i see that too but tell me what anything else you might want to add i don't know if there's something that you had in mind that i didn't ask or that you want to talk about Uh, yeah what what could i send out um and first of all thank you so much nicolette that you gave interest in what what i'm i'm working on every day and i'm trying to do um i I, Mm -hmm. i'm really thankful for that um Try to hard to make this play. Well, I'm thankful to exchange. Thank you so much. But how do you think the? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I. But you're welcome. But how do you think the the social aspect of the club? You know, I was thinking about what you just said. Um, now we can move around and stuff. And now some people say, you know, we can hardly even socialize with each other. Yeah. So how does what do you see that working out in the next few months with the social club? Yeah, thank. That's what we have been working on already we we created two weeks ago we had our first online social club salon and that worked out pretty well mm-hmm. we went on zoom at like 50, no, 31 people joining the the salon evening and we had mm-hmm. our breakout rooms you can have like two or three people breaking out and, and meeting and discussing stuff and it was amazing i, I was uh, with the main one of the main editors of spiegel magazine it's a german it's like the german times magazine Mm-hmm. Um, it was really yeah. nice, and um, I met a, a, an artist I never met before. So it was we had very inspiring uh, and, and encounters and, and talks. So what I can tell you, it's online is working as well, but it's just like a, mm-hmm. a thing we develop now. Are we going to use for our global network? So. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad we had the opportunity and have been pushed to go online. So we have a, now a new tool to bring our global chapters together with, with the Arts and Nature Social Club. And right. besides that, we hope that we can uh, meet each other again. We, um, we, Soon. We, will, we yeah, will. Yeah. Soon. We just build up our immune system a little bit and uh, try to build up our our resistance to... Because like you said, if we don't somehow start to live in touch with nature this sort of pandemic will sadly not go away mm. very soon yeah well i i have my opinion on this whole thing i i'm i think uh, it's a it's a horrible thing for for the people who are like touched by it like by death or, or sickness mm-hmm. or um, their jobs endangered and so i think it's a horrible thing on a, on a micro level mm-hmm. and there's another angle Mm -hmm. on the whole situation is like it's a beautiful thing because nature gives us a sign and gives us the the time and the opportunity to to calm down a little bit and to to reevaluate our situation and to breathe Mm -hmm. it's really important in our lives and how our position towards nature is i mean nature gave us Mm -hmm. a really soft 
kick in our face right now. I mean, it could have been much harder. Yeah. So let's let's take it as yeah, an opportunity yeah. and and react to this, and hopefully we all wake up and and change our uh, behavior, consume less, travel less. Um, yes, yes, yes. use much less of what nature is giving us it, it's giving us everything like our food our air to breathe our, our water to drink and yes yes water. all we do is like it's like mm -hmm. kicking kicking nature around and, and asking for more you know and we're seven billions or more now i mean we had yeah. way too many people right now to to manage all this so we have mm -hmm. to calm down a little bit Yeah, Please. yeah. We have to reorganize our yeah. systems, our so-called civilization. Yes. yes. Well, thank you for this inspiring talk. Thank you for the great work that you've done and that you're doing. And uh, hopefully our paths will cross again. As soon as I get over there, I will let you know. And Please come, come visit, visit us. You, you, you always have, have, have an apartment <laughs> yes. for, for a short visit. Okay. Yeah. And I have some ideas. I'm going to email you after. I'll send you some people and some cool. other stuff. Uh, maybe it could be interesting. Amazing, Nicolette. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Hugs. Take care. Big kiss. kiss. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Good bye. luck. Bye. Big hug. Bye. Thanks, Johan. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Johan. Uh, and I hope you learned a little bit and were inspired by all the great things he's doing. Let's definitely use art to bring people together, to bring people back into nature, for respect of nature, for respect of our earth, respect of each other, and uh, make this world a better place every day we're working with the creative forces. Thanks for joining the Bees and Honey podcast and speak soon. <laughs>